All right, folks. So another common question I get quite a bit is how do I download my PayPal transactions into my QuickBooks Online? So I'm going to go ahead and log in into QuickBooks, connect it to the PayPal account, and show you how that process works. So the first thing you got to do is once you're logged into QuickBooks Online, you're going to click on the Banking tab on the left-hand side. And then you're going to see on the right-hand side a green button that says Add Account. You need to make sure that when you click on the drop-down menu of all your connected accounts, these are all my connected bank and credit card accounts, that you don't see PayPal in there. So if PayPal is not in there, that means it's not connected yet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Account on the right-hand side of the screen. And then I'm just going to type PayPal. I'm going to click on where it says Connect to PayPal. Then I'm going to click on Let's Do It. Give permission. So you get a pop-up window from PayPal asking you, okay, what are your PayPal credentials? So let me go ahead and put my PayPal email. Click on Next. Then enter my PayPal password and then click on Login. Then on this screen, we're going to go ahead and click on Go Back to Intuit. That's going to reroute you back into uh, the QuickBooks Online Banking Setup for PayPal. So I'm just going to click on Next. Then it's going to ask me, what would you like to call this account in QuickBooks? So you can give it whatever name you want. Let's just call it PayPal Bank. That's good enough. And then we click on Save. And then Next. Then it says, how far back would you like this import to go? So you usually can go back about 18 months. You're going to pick your actual starting date that you want to go back to. So I'm actually going to pick 01, 01, 2020, because I want to bring every transaction from the 1st of 2020, then click on Save, then click on Done. Then it says PayPal and QuickBooks are now working together. Yay. Now we're going to go ahead and click on Check It Out. Sometimes a pop-up window will pop up with a video on how to work with PayPal, but we don't need that, so we're going to close that. And now we should see as one of the accounts connected to QuickBooks, so if I click on any of the accounts that are up there, I should now see PayPal as one of them. So you see it right there, PayPal Bank. So when I click on that, it should now uh, connect me into the downloaded transactions that came from PayPal. So I can also uh, browse by clicking on the right and the left uh, carrot icon to browse through all the bank accounts and credit cards that are connected to make sure that I have selected PayPal Bank. So once I've selected a PayPal Bank, I'm going to go ahead and close this up for a minute to have a little bit more real estate. You should see all the transactions that came from PayPal. So in here, it'll work just like a bank feed, like a regular download banking download, where you're able to download transactions, add them, match them up with something else. So let's do a couple of examples. So for example, Google charged me a uh, $1.99. So at this point, I can just click on this transaction. I can make sure I create my vendor name. So I'm actually going to create a vendor name called Google Storage. And then under category, I'm going to put this into office expenses. And I could choose to job cost and select a customer job if I want to. And then under description, notice that uh, the transaction ID. And there's actually a, an actual hyperlink, which is really cool. I could actually copy that go into a browser somewhere and then click on paste. And I should be able to see the specific transaction in PayPal. So I'm going to log in and show you what happens when you copy and paste that into PayPal. So notice that it's showing me the specific PayPal transaction with all the details. So that's actually pretty cool that downloads with every single transaction. So let's say, for example, that vendor name is good. The expense category is good. And at this point, I'll just click on add. So those are four expenses made by PayPal. Now, when we're talking about uh, income or uh, payments coming in from PayPal, that gets a little bit more complicated. So for example, this customer here paid me $48 minus a fee, turned out to be about $46.31. So if I click on that transaction, I've actually got a couple of choices. One, I can choose whether or not this comes as a sales receipt, a deposit, or a transfer. Typically, I want to bring in actual sales that I make for, for whatever platform I'm making the sales from that's using 
PayPal as a platform, I want to bring that generally as a sales receipt. I can choose to leave the customer blank or I can actually create uh, the customer's name. So I'm just going to grab uh, the customer's name from here from the bank detail, copy that and paste that into vendor customer. So it's going to ask me to add the customer. So I'll go ahead and add it. And that's going to be a manual process, adding customers. You're going to have to choose to add them if you want to. So uh, you can leave it blank or you can add uh, the customer. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on details just to show you what that looks like. And that basically blows up the transaction and brings in all the details from the transaction. So you can see uh, the reference number. You can see the actual description from PayPal. You can see the customer's email up here. You can see the sales receipt number. So basically it gives you a preview of what it would look like if it comes in as a sales receipt. So it's actually a beautiful, perfect thing. So I'll go ahead and click on save and add. And that was added into QuickBooks. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. So let me scroll down over here. Let's look at this other one here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, but instead of clicking details, I'm just gonna click straight out to show you. So there's my customer's name, copy that paste it into vendor customer. So now it forces me to add it to create a new customer, save. And then I'm just going to click on add without clicking details. And you're going to notice how that comes in into uh, QuickBooks. And I'm going to show you what these transactions look like once they're inside QuickBooks. So if I actually come up here from uh, for review to reviewed, I can see a list of all the transactions that were added or matched through the process of uh, bringing the transactions through uh, through uh, uh, PayPal into QuickBooks through Bank Feeds. And you can see all the transactions in there and I can click on any of these. So I'm gonna click on one of them particularly. So you can see kind of what this looks like. So this looks like a, a bank deposit that actually has a sales receipt associated with it, which is a gross amount of $4.99. And then it creates an expense for the uh, PayPal fee. So you see that right there for 14 77 and those are two different uh, line items the gross amount the fee and then the net that comes into the bank which is the 484 dollars with 23 cents so the integration is actually really really cool um, because it brings in that expenditure and automatically adds it in there which is something i really like so i'm gonna go ahead and click on save and close here and i want to go ahead and select the other one which is that the expenditure the google expenditure so we can see what that looks like and that's just gonna look like a regular expense coming from PayPal bank, right? There's the date, there's my vendor name, there's the detailed description. And then down here, as we mentioned earlier, is the link if you wanna see the transaction in detail. I'm gonna show you one more thing, which is called matching. And matching, it's a little bit tricky, which is when I go ahead and create the transaction before I add it into PayPal, and then I use the PayPal download to match. So for example, Let's go down here to one of these sales and notice that here's a sale for $24. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create that transaction for $24 outside the banking system and then see what happens once uh, QuickBooks sees that transaction and tries to match it. So let's assume, for example, uh, we were not working in banking at the moment. We were doing something completely different, an entirely different workflow. Maybe we were creating the invoices on the fly, or maybe the invoices come from some other POS or shopping cart system, whatever. The point is the invoices were created in QuickBooks before uh, the transactions were downloaded through PayPal. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to new and create a new invoice. I'm gonna go to send invoice and I'm gonna put uh, the customer's name here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the customer. And then I'm just gonna pick an item here at random. I'll pick, let's say, this item called widget one. And we're selling this item for $24. And this was done, let's say, on February 9th. So on February 9th, I invoiced whatever product, widget one, for $24. And that was created in QuickBooks before the bank feed was downloaded or before PayPal was downloaded. So for example, if I go back into banking and go into PayPal and scroll down, now notice that every one of the sales that downloaded for the $24 are potential matches. So every single transaction that came for 24 bucks is telling you, hey, maybe this is the match, right? So you get to see the 
the PayPal name here on the left hand side and then inside the match it tells you the, the name in QuickBooks which happens to be the same one in PayPal so at this point I would just hit match. This is one that's a bit more rare because I don't have that many I have a lot of transactions with that dollar amount let's pick this one for 149 I don't have that many for 149 and I'm actually going to use I'm not going to use the customer's real name I'll use some other name just to kind of illustrate that so let's go back here into new and then I'm going to go to send invoice and then we're going to call this one Hector Garcia we're just making up a customer's name I'm going to go ahead and pick uh let me just add a another G here at the end because I already have him as a vendor and then click on the drop down menu and pick any of these items and the rate is dollar 149 actually and let's pull this back to maybe February 1st and then we'll go ahead and click on save and close that go back into banking then I'm in PayPal let me scroll down okay and there actually was a couple of transactions for $149 so it's actually showing you all the $149 transactions from PayPal and the three that are possible matches so as you see here on the payee this is uh, the payee that we created in QuickBooks and the potential match and then right here is the PayPal actual pay PayPal payee whoever paid you so at this point you would have to know hey, in PayPal it has one name but in QuickBooks has a different name and at that point you have to decide you know if the one any of these are supposed to match so if you do that you just click on match and that takes care of it and I'm gonna show you one way to match another way to match which is with a sales receipt which should work very very similar so let's say we're gonna grab let's grab another transaction here let's grab uh, this one for 79 bucks okay uh, and then the name of this customer is Vicky Vicky wild okay so let's go to new let's go to make a sale which is a sales receipt and let's put here Victoria wild and I'm misspelling it on purpose just to illustrate that it doesn't have to be exact and we'll pick one of these items widget 2 and let's say for example that's 79 items for a dollar each so it turns out to be $79 right and then we'll pull this back and make this let's say January 1st as the sales receipt now under deposit 2 at this point I would have to pick PayPal bank because this is the tricky one which is when you create sales receipts you have to tell QuickBooks where is this money being routed to so you actually have to think about it when you do it this way so we're going to see if this works and let me go ahead and click on save okay and that's saved so now I'm gonna go back into my banking and notice that all the transactions are $79 uh, are now potential matches with Victoria Wild so at this point I would just pick which is the one that could be the potential match so it's gonna be this one right here and then I'm just gonna click on match next to it and once I match all the other ones shouldn't show up as matched again so that's in a nutshell how you connect the bank enter expenses and match current income now what if we don't need to match current income what if we need to just create a rule that everything that comes from paypal just automatically send it into quickbooks as a generic customer and put it into income we could do that so let me show you how that would work so again we're going to go ahead and assume that every single deposit that's coming in it's going to be automatically be entered into quickbooks i don't want to be dealing with specific sales receipts specific customers specific matching right so i'm going to do is i'm going to go into rules in the top and then I'm going to select a new rule on the right hand side of the screen then what would you like to call this rule so let's call this one PayPal sales so this rule applies to money out or money in so that's going to be money in and will it be uh, all bank accounts no we're going to uncheck that and only apply this into PayPal okay perfect so I'd include all the following so I really don't need to do anything with this all I have to do really is do amount and do uh, greater than zero so any dollar amount positive pretty much and then how do we want to enter that let's go ahead and enter that as a deposit so for category let's click on the drop down and let's pick any of our income accounts so we'll put here under paypal sales so it looks like there's a paypal sales account that's perfect under payee we can't put anything here because it's going to be different per customer so we can just create a generic customer called paypal customer so we we'll just call it PayPal customer, create that as a customer, put that there again, PayPal customer, and then click on save. 
then we don't need, need to add anything on the memo part. And down here where it says automatically confirm the transactions, automatically confirm transactions, this rule applies to. So auto confirm means it's not even gonna ask me what is it gonna go to. It just goes straight into that category. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Then when it's done, you're gonna see up here that it says 108 transactions were added. Like it actually went away really quick, but we'll, we'll get to see it in a second. So I'm gonna go back into banking here and then go into where it says reviewed. So these are all the ones that have already been entered into QuickBooks reviewed. And then here in the filters, I can select on the filter and then on the rule, I can click on auto add rule and then click on apply. And basically this is gonna filter all the transactions that were automatically added into QuickBooks based on that rule. I'm just gonna click on the X here just to show all the transactions here so you can see them. So right here you see all the transactions that were created and notice that uh, all these deposits were put in there. See, you see every single one of these deposits were in there and I can actually click on any of these so we can see what happens to those transactions. I notice that the way this books it, this will book it as a deposit. So it won't do it as a sales receipt. So when you do the rules, it can only go as a sales, as a, as a deposit. But when you enter one by one, it would go as a sales receipt. So I'll explain what that means in a second. Let me go ahead and click on uh, save and close over here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and undo a couple of these. I'm gonna undo them just so I can bring them back into uh, my bank feed. So I'm gonna go back into for review and then notice that the three transactions that I undid came back in here. And notice that the rule, it's automatically, uh, th the rule that was originally applying was the one that says uh, PayPal sales. So if I click on this add button over here, it will apply the banking rule. But if I actually click and expand it and look at the details, right, and actually don't have this deposit, have this say sales receipt instead, and instead of clicking this add button, I click on that add button, they actually come in differently. This one will come in as a sales receipt. So notice when I click on the magnifying glass, you look at all the transactions that were recently created, this was one of them, right? So I'll be able to click on it and see exactly what the transaction looks like because that's gonna be a sales receipt, not a deposit. I'll show you, I'm gonna click on new and then I'm gonna click on make a sale, which is my sales receipts. And then here on the history button to the left to sales receipt, I can click on that and I can see every single sales receipt that was created. So I, can, I can go back to any of them here and I can see exactly how the sales receipt was created. So I know there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things are tricky here. Notice and go back to the to the to every explanation because there's a couple of moving parts. So one, you have the choice of manually selecting what each of these transactions is gonna be, sales receipt, deposit, whatever, create a customer and then click on add, or two, you can create a rule so it automatically comes in as a deposit. Or three, you can create the transaction beforehand and then match it here. So you have to think about that workflow uh, for those deposits before you connect that PayPal account and you know exactly sort of your game plan on how you're gonna bring uh, bring this in. And then uh, as a summary here for the expenditures, that's gonna be based on the type of expenditures you have. So you can go and see all the expenditures that you're doing through PayPal. Most people don't use PayPal to buy stuff. They use it mostly to receive money but I use it to buy stuff, so I notice all the expenditures I have here. And as I mentioned earlier, you just open the one that it's gonna be, create the vendor manually, and then I'm just gonna create here Roku as the vendor, put this under office supplies or office expenses, then click on add, and then QuickBooks, as smart as it is, when it sees Roku again, it will try to use the same category. So I'm gonna click on description here, so you see it. It's gonna resort the transactions, I'm gonna scroll down here and then there's Roku again. I didn't grab it this time. Let's do it one more time here. Let's do Roku and let's put that under office expenses. So that should take it. If it didn't take it, uh, what you can do is you can create the rule for the expenditure uh, beforehand or proactively. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, uh, let's grab a different one, Dropbox. So I'm gonna create rules for the Dropbox expenditure before I, I add them in a category here and hope that the rules will automatically classify it. So let's go back into rules here and let's go to new rule. And let's say 
we'll call this rule Dropbox. And then it says money out. Yeah, this will be a money out. All bank accounts, no, it would be specifically the PayPal account. Perfect. And then under description, we'll put, it just contains the word Dropbox. So before I didn't use any, any, any text here, I just used a dollar amount. In here, I'm just gonna do Dropbox. And then how do I wanna create it? I wanna create it as an expense. Or the category, let's put this into office expenses. Under pay, I'm gonna create the pay called Dropbox. You actually have to do the extra effort and create those payees there. So let me just type it again because it didn't take and it needs to be a vendor and then click on save. And then this time I'm not going to do auto confirm. Put the vendor name there. I'm not going to do auto confirm. So I'll leave that disabled and then I'm, I'll click on save. So it's a diff little bit different of a rule. The first rule we created was to grab everything and automatically classify it. This time the rule is there just to classify it, but ask me before I do anything. So notice that now I look at my drop boxes and uh, it's, it's applying the rule called office expenses. When I click on it, notice the vendor name gets automatically added and the category gets automatically added. And at this point, I could just accept it. If I click on this ad or this ad, it would actually be the, ex the exact same result in this case because I didn't change anything in there. So I'm just gonna click on add. And then when the next one comes up, I'll click on add. And that's how you can create the expenditures uh, one by one or through rules. Now, check in the description below. I'm gonna enter a couple of videos, uh, videos on categorization of bank feeds to go a little bit deeper about categories. I'm gonna do uh, enter a video about uh, doing this with credit cards. So the credit card expenses will also show you what the process looks like. And I'll have an in-depth video on how to use bank rules that we just used in different ways. So you can see the dynamic of how bank rules work in all sorts of different scenarios. Anyway. If you like this video, make sure that you hit like, subscribe to the channel, and add comments below. Comments are really, really important. That's how I know people are watching to the end. That's how I know people are engaged. And in your comments, just ask questions. Tell me what you think about the video and tell me what I didn't cover, what questions were unanswered, so I can think about the next video that uh, in related to this topic. All right, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.